Hello friends, uh, welcome to uh, one more video on NISM series 21B Portfolio Manager Certification Examination. Uh, this video is about fixed income portfolio management strategies uh, which is um, related to chapter 19. So if you go through this particular module uh, in the chapter 19 you will come across fixed income portfolio management strategies. Uh, based on my limited experience, I can say that uh, many uh, people uh, find it difficult to understand fixed income securities, more so fixed income portfolio management strategies. It's much easier to understand equity market because most of us are exposed to equity market or most of us read more frequently about equity market and understand that in a much detailed way than fixed income. The idea behind making this video is to not only um, help understand these concepts of fixed income portfolio management strategies, but also give you some key practice questions, right? So <clears throat> let me take you through 20 interesting questions related to fixed income portfolio management strategies, which will be there in the later part of the video. So we start with the question one, which is, related to buy and hold strategy. So what is buy and hold strategy? As the name suggests, buy and hold strategy means a strategy in which an investor or a fund manager buys a bond and holds it till maturity. And what do you get on maturity? You get the principal amount back. In between, you keep on getting coupon payments from the issuer. So the question is asking which of the following is the main objective of buy and hold strategies? Is it to make maximum money from price movement? No, because when you buy and hold an instrument, you are not looking at price changes because anyway, you will hold it till maturity and you will receive uh, your investment back. So price movement is not your concern. Uh, to generate maximum return from coupons received, which is the option C, obviously that's also not your objective. Uh, to reduce uh, credit risk, uh, well, the credit risk reduction cannot be done through buy and hold strategy. If you want to reduce credit risk, then you need to buy bonds which have very high ratings or which are sovereign bonds uh, which have a kind of a zero credit risk. So what could be the option? The option is to lock the current yield. So what does it mean? It means that whatever uh, yield at which you have purchased a bond, you will like to get that yield till the maturity of the bond. So let me repeat because I have ticked blue, uh, sorry, I ticked yellow at two places. The right answer is to lock the current yield. We move on to question two. A fund manager has purchased 5,000 bonds issued by government of India with an intention to hold it till maturity. Which of the following risks will be faced by investment in these bonds? So we have to understand three things here. One, the bonds issued are by government of India and uh, they, the intention is to hold it till maturity. Right? And there is X number of bonds that has been purchased, which is not very material. Uh, so the moment you buy Government of India bonds, uh, you will not face credit risk. Why so? Because Government of India is considered to be sovereign and assumption is that the sovereign won't default. So we don't consider credit risk uh, as a material risk here. Liquidity risk is also not material because you are holding the bond till maturity. So if you hold something till maturity, you are not going to sell it. So why should you be worried about liquidity risk? Price risk will also be not a concern. Why so? Because you are holding a bond till maturity. So obviously you are not going to sell it. So which risk would come? It would be the reinvestment risk. So I hope you could get that credit risk, liquidity risk and price risks are not material here. We move on to quiz three, which says, what will be the weighted average yield of below mentioned bond portfolio? So we can see that there are four issuers, issuer one to issuer four. Okay. And all these bonds have certain weightages, 40%, 30%, 20%, and 10%. And they have their own unique yield, 7.75, 8, 8.25, and 8.5. So how do you get the weighted average yield? So what you do is that you multiply 40% and 7.75 right so it's like multiplication of these two values similarly you multiply 30 percent and 8 percent and you do it till end and then you add whatever you get as the solution 
So the answer that will come is 8%. So 8% will be the weighted average yield. I hope you understood how to arrive at it. So basically multiply the weight with the yield in all four cases and add them together. Let us move to the next question, which is the question four and it says, which of the above mentioned weight scenarios is the riskiest? So you can see that there are four issuers here, issuer one, issuer two, issuer three and issuer four. So we have issuer one to four. They, these four bonds have been put in a portfolio in different weights. So in the first scenario, you can see that there's a weight of 25% to the sovereign bond. In the second scenario, there's a weight of 40% to the sovereign bond. While in the third scenario, that weight is just 10%, right? So if you see in the third scenario, the triple A and double A rated bonds have very less weight. They actually have 20% and 10% weightage and more weight is given to double A plus and double A bonds, right? So double A plus is has a weightage of 30%. And double A has weightage of 40%. So out of the three scenarios, because the weightage of double A plus and double A bonds are higher, the scenario three becomes the riskiest. So I hope you could get that why we have arrived at scenario three, because in scenario three, sovereign bonds have the least weightage, followed by triple A bonds, which have a, you know some good weight but not as great as scenario one and scenario two, right? We move on to question number five, which of the following is not true about buy and hold strategy. So buy and hold strategy we have already seen is a strategy in which you hold the bond till maturity. So cash flows are predictable. Yes, because when you buy a bond and hold it till maturity, you'll keep on getting coupons. Coupon payments are received as per the terms. Yes, very much. Buy and hold strategy reduces transaction cost, which is true. Why so? Because when you buy and hold the bonds till maturity, you don't sell them. So what should be the answer? A reinvestment risk with respect to coupon payments does not exist. See, this is the only risk which you have to bear in case of a buy and hold strategy. What would happen is that when you buy a bond and hold it till maturity, you will keep on getting coupon and you won't be able to reinvest those coupons at the same rate. Then there would be a reinvestment risk. So reinvestment risk arises when coupon cannot be reinvested at the same rate, which is the rate of coupon, right? So if you are getting 8% as coupon payment, but you can reinvest that payment at 7% only, you have the reinvestment risk. This takes us to question six, which of the following is not the right reason to adopt bond index funds, okay? So basically, uh, you know, if you have to, you know, follow a strategy of of chasing a bond index fund, okay? Why will you not like to adopt it, right? Many times what happens is that fund, fund managers just copy an index fund or rather they create a portfolio based on an index fund and they follow that, right? The cost of managing an index fund is very small compared to an actively managed fund, okay? Well, <clears throat> this is definitely a good reason. There are many bond indices available with if, which effectively means availability of choices for creation of bond index fund, which is also true. Bond index funds are easy to replicate, uh, which is also true. Okay. Liquidity risk is very high in case of bond index fund. Well, this is not true, right? Why? Because bond index funds have those bonds which are typically very liquid. So the answer D will not hold good. We'll move on to question number seven. Dash 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 is defined as the annualized standard deviation of return between the index fund and target index. So what is the difference between returns of index fund and target index? That is called as the tracking error. Tracking error captures that difference. So suppose you have a portfolio which is giving 10% return. It follows an index which is giving 11% return. This difference of 1% is captured through tracking error. So we move on to question number eight, which is this, there was a low liquidity in benchmark security because of which a fund manager has gone for another security. Okay. Will this cause tracking error and what type of tracking error? So in this case, what has happened is that fund manager has, you know, a kind of a re replaced one security with another in the portfolio. Okay. Because it had liquidity problem. So what will happen? Will this cause a tracking error? Because you are not exactly following up the fund, right? So the answer is 
yes because of selection of similar security now what is the meaning of similar security similar security means you are not actually selecting the exact security but you are selecting something which is very similar to the previous security there is no weight difference that would arise because you are selecting another security but the weight may still be same uh, there is no difference in the cost which will arise cost here relates to transaction cost and other related cost and there would be no track there, there would be no tracking error which means you know this is also not a right answer so what is the right answer because of selection of similar security you have replaced one security with another we move on to question number 9 when the cash in hand is very high with the portfolio manager of a fund tracking error is low well when cash is very high with the fund manager the fund manager will not invest obviously fund manager has not invested in the market so the cash will not generate returns and there would not be replication of index okay replication of index means you will not be able to copy index so if there is an index and you have got a fund which is trying to mimic or trying to copy that index you won't be able to copy it successfully because you have lot of cash with you you'll need to invest cash you'll need to have less and less of cash to ensure that you know your fund is same as the index so is this statement true no this statement is false this takes us to question number 10 which of the following is not is an active bond management strategy you know is buy and hold an active strategy no is indexing an active strategy no so what is an active strategy barwell so barwell is basically an active strategy so this is in barwell strategy you buy bonds uh, which have uh, low maturity and high maturity and you try to benefit from interest rate movements this takes us to question 11 which of the following risk can be mitigated using immunization strategy what is immunization strategy immunization strategy is a strategy in which you try to mitigate the risk arising from interest rate movements so if interest rate goes up the price of a bond falls but reinvestment income increases we have to understand this very clearly so when the interest rates are going up right the price of a bond will fall but reinvestment income will increase so is the fall in price and increase in reinvestment income same if that's not the case then there is a risk so how can you immunize a portfolio you need to take care of price risk and you need to take care of reinvestment risk both these risks have to be managed so what are what is the answer obviously 1 and 2 we'll move on to next question which of the following statement is true zero coupon bonds have duration equal to its maturity zero coupon bonds dura have higher duration than its maturity zero coupon bonds duration have they have lower duration than its maturity one point that we all must know that zero coupon bonds have duration always equal to maturity why so because in case of zero coupon bonds all the payments are received only on maturity there is no intermittent cash flow in form of coupon so the answer here will be a let us move on to question 13 immunization is a semi active strategy well in the book it has been put as a um, active strategy oh, sorry passive strategy however i would say that it's a semi active strategy what is the reason for that the reason for that is that in case of immunization you will have to constantly protect your portfolio from interest rate risk so as and when interest rate changes you will have to change your portfolio this is what makes it is a as a semi active strategy it's not a fully passive strategy it's a semi active strategy so the statement is true but let me repeat in the book if you read it will be put under the category of uh, passive strategy but if you read the finer points or the nitty gritty of it you will come across it's being a semi active strategy the next point is in this bond portfolio management strategy portfolio is concentrated at the both ends of duration with minimal mid duration bonds which strategy is this so as i said earlier barbell is a strategy in which you have bonds which are for lower duration and bonds which are with very high duration so you buy bonds which have lower duration and very high duration and only 
few investments are there in mid duration bonds so that's called as the barbell strategy which which what is the duration of a floater bond a floater bond is a bond whose interest rates are set periodically so basically these floater bonds are nothing but a floating rate bond so what could be the duration of these bonds is it equal to maturity no is it equal to remaining term to maturity no it is equal to reset of underlying interest rate index so basically uh, you know the interest rates may be reset periodically every 6 month every quarterly whatever with the frequency based on the frequency the duration is defined next is which among the following makes it difficult to exactly replicate a fixed income index as compared to the equity index so liquidity of the constituents is very challenging matching duration is very difficult matching credit quality also very difficult well constituents could be available easily but these three things could be very challenging you will not be always getting a liquid instrument or liquid bond you will not be able to match the duration why because bonds will have different maturity and different duration and you will have to assign weights to them similarly credit quality matching will be very difficult you know you may not always get the bond with the same yield okay uh, across credit quality so the answer for this will be b so 2 3 and 4 only we are left with four questions so we move to the question 17 which of the following would involve decision making or transaction by a fund manager of a passive fund so uh, you know why would fund manager take a decision or do a transaction if it is a passive fund he should not be making any decision typically because it's a passive fund it is just a buy and hold strategy he has purchased once and is holding the bond till maturity so what could be the reason so there are two reasons given inflows and outflows in the portfolio which is true whenever there is an inflow and outflow in the portfolio what will happen is that fund manager will have to buy the bonds whenever there is an outflow he will have to sell the bond he or she will have to sell the bond similarly change in the benchmark index composition if one bond is getting replaced with another bond he will have to sell one bond and buy another bond so the answer for this is both 1 and 2 this takes us to question number 18 which of the following would cause tracking error in a passive fund will it be similar but not the same security as we had discussed earlier will it be cash in hand or will it be cost of transaction well it will be all of the above remember tracking errors gets caused by uh, similar yet not the same security cash in hand means you will not be able to mimic the index and cost of transactions will also result into you know uh, uh, there being a problem with you know tracking error right we move on to question 19 if a bond has positive convexity then the bond uh, increases more if interest rates decline than the duration estimate would suggest so duration has a limitation and that's why there would be more increase in the bonds value next and the last question is the value of the portfolio that invest in bonds with credit risk will be sensitive to change in interest rate structure which of the following describes the interest rate structure well interest rate structure can be defined by or described by shift slope and shape and change in the credit spread both of them right uh, now shift slope and shape shape are called as 3 ss they define how would be the you know value of portfolio changing shift slope and shape re relates to the yield curve similarly change in credit spread will also define the value of the uh you know value of portfolio that invest in bonds with credit risk credit spread means the difference between the bond yield on a risk free security versus bond yield on a risky security right so this is both 1 and 2 this takes us to the end of the video thank you for your time and uh, please do uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel